So tell us a little bit more. You, you were speaking of the anxiety that you were dealing with. Us. Please tell us the severity of that, how that affected you. Um, it affected me a lot. So when I, um, even, so I would go home and I would have panic attacks at home where I didn't want to leave my house. Um, I didn't want to go to barbecues. I didn't want to go to anything because I just wanted to isolate myself because I was ashamed of having anxiety, um, especially that I was a follower of God. And so um, it was to the point where I was going to the ER because I just thought I was having a heart attack and my panic attacks were really bad. Um, I just remember calling my mom and she lives far from me. So I don't, I don't really have family here. Um, Come on, guys. Come on. So with this anxiety, it would shut you down. It would shut you down. Yeah. So <clears throat> I know that these are tears of joy because that's not the way it is for you anymore. So why don't you go ahead and tell us, how did that process take place? How did you start to get your, your freedom and your deliverance from this anxiety? Um, it was definitely a process. Um, so just surrounding yourself. At first, we would come on Sundays, um, and we would get refreshed. But what totally changed for us is being a part of a life, life group. Come on, and, um, come on. Being, being around people that were positive, and if you were just having a crummy day, like, okay, let's just pray. Let's pray with you. Let's, let's, let's get to the bottom of this. Yeah. And just surrounding your people um, with people that were positive and loving, and you, f you feel the love of God, and it's just... These life groups are just as powerful if you just came to church. You feel the Holy Spirit moving these life groups. And so that's what this process has been. And now that I know, um, like, if I get anxious, like, in the car when I'm driving, like, I stop and I know this is not mine. That's right. And I declare it and I pray. And then within, like, a couple minutes, like, a couple minutes, it's gone. So now, like, the difference is that I know that it's not mine and I declare it. And it's just... It's just feel good about knowing that I can defeat it. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. So I want you to notice something here. Because sometimes it is an instant miracle. And sometimes it's a promise. And it's something you hold on to. And it's something you press on to. Once again, Paul said, no, I have not reached perfection. But I press on into it. And that is what Darlene has done. She presses on. When she feels that coming on, she goes, no, I know what my promise is, and God has not promised me anxiety. Amen? So tell us, how is, how is your life now? How, how have things changed since you've started realizing it's not yours, since you haven't, you've decided to not let it take control of you? Um, I'm way happier. Um, people notice the happiness, the change that I've had. Um, as well as uh, my family. Okay. So my family, um, they don't live here, but I've been pressing so much into God that there's been healings in my family as well. So That's right. So even though her family doesn't live here, you guys, we ha Hungry Generation has no reach toward them really except her. So tell us what healings have taken place in your family because of this and what, what have you guys seen happening around you? I've seen, I've seen a lot. So my mom um, was healed from her scoliosis. She had scoliosis and her back's completely straight. Um, my father has uh, kidney disease and for the past two years his kidneys were working at 40%. And the Raised to Deliver conference in April, he went two and three months later that he went back to the doctors and his kidneys are fully functioning at 60 plus. Come on, you guys! Right? That's so amazing. That's so amazing. Okay, keep going. I'm sorry. We had to give a moment for praise there. It's just too good. And as well as my father, he's completely off of his blood, uh, high blood pressure medication as well from one day to another. Yes. So, Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So those, um, those were the healings that were taking place in my family. And so now I see why the enemy was trying to attack me so much is because that um, I where sometimes people can't go and you're the only person that go to bring light, like God moves through you, through your family, through your friends, through your coworkers. And so I see now like what he was trying to do in my life and yeah. it's not gonna happen. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's so awesome. So Sam, why don't you come over here and talk to us a little bit? We love Darlene, but we love Sam too. We'll give him some time, huh? <laughs> 
So, okay, tell me, because you were with her, obviously, through thick or thin. You guys took those vows. Tell me, what was it like when things were thin? Tell me about how you, you stood strong. When uh, her anxiety will attack, she would call me while I was at work. And she's like, the anxiety is back. So I will get off of work just for her. And as soon as I got home, I felt the anxiety in my home. So I told her, let's start praying. And as soon as we started praying, it was gone. Amen. Good godly husband, man. Good example of what a good godly, godly husband is supposed to look like. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so tell us now that you can see you can see the beginning of where she was and you can see the process of it. How have things changed? It's it's changed a lot. Going through all that stuff, I know the enemy was trying to take her down, but at the same time he was trying to take me down because I was her rock. And I said I said, no, nah, not at my house. Woo! Yes. And and like I I was a, I was a scared of the enemy. So I wanted to show that to my wife, that hey, I'm here for you, and God is here for us. Yeah. And I knew the enemy knew, hey, they, they know God. They're going to, you know. So I came, and I, I, instead of the, him attacking us, I attacked back. Woo, yes. So in our home, we worship. You know, we get on our knees, and we start praying to our Lord and Savior. Yeah. You know, but she... It cha she's changed so much where and she wakes up so happy, joyful. You know, she wakes up and I, I hear Christian music in the, in the bathroom. I'm like, yes, Lord. <laughs> you know, and it's just every day, you know, I, we just get closer and closer to God. That's right. That's right. And the closer we get to the God, is, is like the further the enemy goes away. Amen. The closer we get to God, the further the enemy gets. So, so tell me, because things are not just happening for Darlene, but also in your life. Tell us about what happened at work. <laughs> well, at work, since I've been, I've been praying and I've been uh, meditating in the word of the Lord. That's right. And I, I hear like all these healings that everybody's been doing and I keep praying to God. I was like, Lord, I want to do a healing. That's right. It was like, so I just kept praying and meditating, and at work, there's this gentleman, his, I'm not going to say his name, but uh, I saw, I see him every day, and he has a limp, and uh, it touched my heart, and I was like, uh, the Holy Spirit tells me, go pray for him, That's right. and I was like, on top of a ladder, I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, we've all been there before, right? Like, we can relate to that. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. What if he thinks I'm crazy? And the Holy Spirit is like, let him think that. Woo! Let him think you're crazy for the Lord. That's right. So I was like, okay, I'll pray for him. <laughs> so I tell him, I was like, hey, can I pray for you? And he looked at me. He's like, yes, <laughs> of course. I was like, okay, during break, we'll, I'll pray for you. So break came by and we started praying. And I started praying for his leg to be healed in the name of Jesus. That's right. And this, I started getting hot. And we're outside. I'm, I'm, I work in construction. So it's cold. So my, has, my hands started sweating. And then I started heating up. And then when I was praying over him, I felt a jolt through my hand oh. go into his body. Woo. And at the same time, he said he was getting warm as well. And he was feeling the heat. And... And when I was done, I, st I stayed quiet for a little bit. I opened my eyes, and he was like. <laughs> and he's like, I don't know, but I felt something here with us today. He's like, I felt the warmth and the love that I know God has, because he knows God. He's like, and I felt the Holy Spirit here with us. And I asked him, how is your leg? And he said, It's healed. And, I was, and we just started screaming, amen, glory to God. And then we just, we just kept talking, you know. And I just told him, God loves you. And I gave him a hug. And every day he sees me, my, my leg is good. My leg is good. Amen. 
Amen. I mean, this is just one example of what the Lord is doing today. And it's so exciting. But guys, please, because you've just been so inspiring to everybody. Please tell us. We'll start with you, Sam, first. What, what is your advice to everybody? My advice is, you know, be obedient. You know, because when God gives you a word and you feel like, oh, no, I don't want to do it. Just say yes and just go for it. And things happen you know, through him. Yeah, amen, amen, awesome. So Darlene, go ahead and tell us as well, what, what is your advice to everybody? My advice would be, even though if you're the only one in your family and your friends that is coming to church, don't give up. Because you're, be, you're gonna be the only person that can change your friends, your coworkers' lives, and you're the only person that get that person. So keep pressing forward and surround yourself with, with the community that prays, that, that fasts, that meditates. And, and just build your faith so we can spread the faith to others as well. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, you guys. Let's give them a round of applause, please.